Well, good morning, everyone. This is my micro segment for the morning. So if I don't have beer, I have my instant Star Spangs coffee. <laughs> so I have a new plan for today. I ran into three different sets of guys, yes, sets of people after I did my live video feed. And uh, all of them would have killed to shoot those bulls I let walk because of camera reasons and because they just weren't big enough yesterday. I seem to be in paradise all by myself until about three o'clock or so, four o'clock. The rain and the sleet and the snow came in again hard, stayed through all night long. Now I'm left with pretty much zero visibility and a lot of wet clothes. That is not the factor for the decision I'm about to make though. When I came off the mountain, at the very peak there were two guys standing there, which was kind of shocking to me, but uh, in the pouring rain and stuff. So I got up closer and realized they had also had good gear. One of them said good gear and the other one Kuyu and really nice guys. They said they've been hunting here for years. Didn't hunt the past couple years. And what's happened apparently is this year they opened up the landowner access from the bottom with the Idaho Access Yes program. Great program for people wanting to get access to land. Bad program for people wanting to kill trophy animals and have a traditional hunt which seems to be disappearing from the face of the planet <laughs> over the counter wise anyways. Tons of pressure. There's more pressure in here, I swear, than there is on uh, public land in Pennsylvania. It's getting that that point. I seen so many people yesterday after I did my live post. I went from being so happy to so dejected. I never did see a really good bull yesterday. I passed on a couple um, where I had some video camera trouble with. I probably would have shot, but they weren't giant either. They were in 300 inch range, and I have yet to hear one just doing the growly, nasally throaty sound that's typical of big elk so after talking to those guys and learning that that program had opened up they had been through four other major drainages up and down this the continental divide where i'm hunting at and uh same deal people everywhere as i noticed in two of those places so those guys being from here knowing all the little secret cracks and crevices they walk hike back uh to the truck and i watched them go most of the way so i'm pretty sure that up a canyon that there's no other timber and they weren't going up there to go pitch a tent it was horrible conditions and i can't imagine trying to pitch a tent in those kind of conditions unless they absolutely had to but they're not coming back today so they're done actually they're so frustrated they quit and that's sad to see so for me the decision i'm going to make today is to shoot a cow i think i could have shot about 15 of them yesterday i'd rather do that than shoot a small bull i just i'd rather leave that opportunity for somebody else quite honestly or a kid or I just, I know it's new school for a lot of you older hunters out there, but there's no reason to take a life of an animal just because of its antlers. I uh, need its meat. And uh, not that you can't take a small bull because of its meat, but I can take a lot of cows. And we know now that when I was growing up, it was the opposite. People thought you should never shoot a doe. It was almost antichrist like to shoot a doe. Um, but we know now that that's exactly the opposite from a management perspective. Most importantly for me, it's gonna give the opportunity for somebody to shoot something else, to shoot a bull, um, and get that feeling, get that fire lit inside of them to do things like I am at, at a later stage in life even, and uh, pass it on kind of thing. And that's what I feel like I'm doing instead of shooting a small bull, even though I'm sure I could ruin one easily. I had a couple come running in like puppies yesterday. It's just not, just not what I came here for, so it's not what I'm gonna take, so I hope, uh, Hope a lot of people understand that and get it. Even though I'm sitting here in this goofy hat. <laughs> Sorry, it's kinda, it is kind of goofy looking. Drinking my star spanks, which is probably anti-hunting. But so is pretty much every company out there to some degree or another. So I don't even know what to say about that kind of crap. But I'm just here to enjoy the, the rest of the day. The fog's kind of clearing off a little bit. Hopefully the rain's done. I got my clothesline built out here. Pretty much the rest of my gear. Hopefully it'll dry out in time. If not, with the exception of the down jacket, it'll keep me warm. And uh, my Kafaro's nice and dry inside, albeit a giant mess. So, we get organized, hit the road. Uh, I got about four miles to go, probably. Hopefully I can get into one. I almost shot one last night, but it was on the border of the Idaho-Montana line. And I just, looking back when I got back to 10, I should have pulled the trigger because it was only about a mile from my camp. But I didn't know that at the time, and I didn't want to risk, obviously, shooting, burning my Montana tag 
and I certainly am not going to put an Idaho tag on a Montana elk. It's just not fair. It's not right. So, off I go. Cheers. Peace out.